so hard as thinking the same thing. Look at this. Ball's dead. Dead ball. The ball actually hit Shoes' bat as Martin went to throw it back to the pitcher. Well, why is it dead? Why is it dead? That ball's alive. Well, Dale Scott signaled immediately. That ball's alive. Unless he thought that Chu crossed over the plate. No, what Chu was doing, just getting ready. He's just getting ready to hit again. He's just standing there getting ready to hit. Watch this. He's getting himself ready to hit. And that's just a throwback and a hit the bat. That's, that's not Chu's fault. That is not in the That's his he, the same motion he does that every at bat. So that's now remember Jeff Bannister's a catcher and he's gonna call him in. I'm telling you, that's and the other part about this, the run score. Ordor came in and touched the plate. That's so important because if they come back and rule that ball's live, then that run has to count. Well, Dale Scott called it so quickly. My first reaction was that Chu did step across the plate, but clearly he did not. He was in his normal finished position. This is a tough one right here. Now the interesting thing here is you got two catchers that are managers. All right. And this is you see clearly I mean, she was in the batter's box. Look, yeah. it's, look, it's no different. In my mind, I could be totally wrong, but I don't think I am here. It's no different than if Russell Martin throws the ball down and the pitcher hits off the glove and he drops it. Or if he threw it and it hit off the back of his back. He's got a score. And here he scores. That's a that's a run score. I think that's the right call. I do too. It's incidental contact. And it's no different than if he threw the ball any other place. He just happened to hit the bat and Chu did not intentionally interfere. And they are going crazy throwing everything in this place. Well, it is the right call, rule six. Point oh three in the rule book. They got to get the players off the field. It, they're throwing beer cans, bottles, and everything on the field. If the batter interferes with the catcher's fielding or throwing by stepping out of the batter's box or making any other movement that hinders the catcher's play at home plate, the batter is ruled out. But that was not the case. He was in the batter's box, as you guys said. That's clearly a difference. I think it's the right call. And this is just an ugly scene right here from fans who have just made this place a tremendous place for baseball over the years, especially the last two months. And right now, embarrassing. Well, they can't be throwing stuff from the upper deck. You hit somebody else that is in the seats lower. That's going to do some serious damage. You're throwing beer bottles and everything else. But I'll get back to the field real quick. That play, they got the call right. They I did. I, I don't see how you reverse it. It is not a reviewable play. It's a judgment go to replay. Call. It's a judgment call, and the umpires all got together, all six of them. Dale Scott, the crew chief. John Gibbons looking for an explanation. Well, the only way I can go back and explain it is the throw is made. So once that ball leaves Russell Martin's hand, that is a throw. And if it hits an object, it hits an object. If he throws, he's going to make a throw. He throws the ball, it's released. And if it hits an object, what if that ball is dropped by Sanchez and the runner comes in? It's the same thing that an umpire has to look at. It's just an unfortunate deal, but that's that's what happened. I don't think she had any intent. He's just getting ready to hit. He's pulling his sleeve up, and the ball hit him. You can see his reaction. Very strange play. You saw Martin really did not get out of his crouch to throw that ball back. Now I want to go back to the point of the rule too. With replay and everything else, we've watched when they place runners, right? 
the importance of, of Rupnet Odor going in and touching home plate awards him home plate. If he does not go home, you can't award him home. But since he touched it, that is the, the uh, reward that he should get or award that he gets for that. It goes back to the Chase Utley play. A lot of people wondered why was Chase Utley allowed to be at second base. And now somebody's been ejected from the Blue Jays dugout. I mean, they, they got to get their players on the field focused in, too. I think it might be David Price at the top of steps. But bottom line is they got the call right. That's Brett Cecil right there. I'm not sure he was the one who was ejected, but he certainly is carrying on as if he were. Cecil not on the active roster. So they didn't lose much. Suffered a torn calf back in game two. So why don't you read that rule again? Well, first, the public address announcer has requested that fans refrain from throwing objects onto the field. And now they're throwing more. And folks, some of these bottles are coming from the upper deck. You, you got to remove very the players. Good ballpark, cans as well. You got to take the dangerous. Players. Take the players off the field. They need a timeout. Take the players off the field. Well, rule 6.03 that you're referring to, Harold. If the batter interferes with the catcher, the plate umpire shall call interference. The batter is out and the ball is dead. No player may advance on such interference, but as we saw on the replays, that was not the case. I always look at is this normal movement? And he's just got himself ready. He's still in the box getting ready to hit. I still think the key to this play is Rick Middle Door comes across and scores. Think about a major league baseball season and how many times a catcher throws the ball back to the pitcher. And in this case, it sends home the tie-breaking run, the seventh inning of a sudden death game. Now, what they're going to do right now is they're going to go back and, and actually review. I guess the umpires have that option to do it. They've been asked. It's too important of a game. I guess not to. But they'll call back unless they would like to confirm where Odor was. True. Down the base path. But I think this is the right new right move to do. There's too much at stake in a 2-2 game in the seventh and a game five to not make sure you're 100 percent correct. Time is never called. That's the other thing. The since you two didn't call time. Uh, by the time Dale Scott had called time, Odor was already on his way to the plate. Right. Now this play, this type of play is not listed as far as plays that are subject to review. However, as we said, they could be looking at where exactly Odor was. Well, I think the enormity of the situation calls for them to go ahead and make the call. There's no problem when they make the call back. For those that don't know, you, you call back to... Chelsea, New York, the supervisors are there watching the games where replays are done from. You get a, 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 a person who's not emotionally attached to the game right now to give you their perspective. And I think that's very important. That's Dale Scott, the crew chief on the right. Now, well, if they, if they reverse the call, we're going to be here another 30 minutes with Jeff Bannister arguing. But my point here in the beginning was you've got two managers that are catchers. It's a, it's a crazy play. It is. Now another element could be the fact that Dell Scott waved his arms so soon and ruled no play. It was too. He was already scoring. He seemed to be responding to the movements of the pitcher Sanchez, who right away said, "Hey, ball hit his bat." Then you got the timeout, dead ball, and Odor was already on his way to the plate. So he's going to go and explain to. Uh, Mr. Gibbons, what's going on, too?
So here's manager John Gibbons looking for an explanation from Dale Scott. I, think, I don't think this. He said the batter's in the box still. He was saying the bat was not in the box. I think that's what they're looking at, whether the bat of Chu was extended beyond the batter's box. His feet were in the box. The game's under protest. That's what Del Scott just called. Well, I'm not sure that's going to do them any good. The rule of a protest is you can only protest a rule that is improperly applied. You cannot protest a judgment call. Let's watch the bat of Chu. Uh, to me, that's in the box. And again, we've referred to rule 6.03 and another element of that rule. Reading from the Major League Rulebook, if the batter is standing in the batter's box and he or his bat is struck by the catcher's throw back to the pitcher, and the umpire's judgment, there is no intent on the part of the batter to interfere with the throw. The ball is alive and in play. That's exactly what we've been talking about. It's no different in my mind if he throws the ball and, the, and it gets all the way to the pitcher and he drops it and it rolls away and the runner scores. Because once the ball's released, it doesn't matter at what point he releases the ball, he still threw it away. The ball's live. The ball's hot. And if Ordor's in his natural motion and movements, he, I mean, uh, since you chew and he's not intentionally interfering, you can't say there was any foul on his part. I know it's hard to hear, but that's the facts and that's the rules.